Welcome back. I'm Dr. Angela Siegel, and today we're going to carry on with decisions and specifically Boolean variables and operators. We've made it through the majority of our module goals. The only one that we have left at the moment is the ability to write statements using the Boolean data type. So that's what we'll cover today. Boolean is a Java data type. And so today we're going to look at those variables that are of data type Boolean. So you'll see here that we have a Boolean variable named past test, and it's set to true. That is because a Boolean variable can hold one of two values, either true or false. And this is useful if you think about how we uh, make decisions. They always evaluate to true and false. And so those values are of a Boolean data type. Boolean values are used in many interesting ways. So for instance, we've looked at characters, the, the components that make up a string. And we, we can see here that the character class offers a few methods and that return Boolean values. So uh, you can, for instance, check if the character that you're working with is a digit. If it's one of the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you could check that that character is a letter um, by using the isLetter method. And we do that by typing character, big capital letter C, um, dot isLetter, and then supply it with the character that we're checking. So in this case, for all of these examples, if we had a character C, we could we could apply that method by typing character dot method name parentheses C. So for this example, um, on the bottom right of the screen, we can see that we're checking if the a specific character is a digit. So if it's one of the numbers zero through nine, and if it is, um, then we know that we're safe to cast that as an integer. If it wasn't, we would get unexpected results. So um, we can also check if a character is an uppercase, if it's lowercase, if it's white space. These are all really great, but what they're doing is they're returning a Boolean value. And the reason that's important to know is because if you look on the lower right, you'll see that what we're doing is checking if a character is a digit. So if it's a number, zero through nine, and that's our decision. Um, and this is safe to do because what that, what that if statement is expecting is a Boolean value. It's expecting to something that returns true or false. Well, we're not looking if something is greater than or less than another, but we are returning true or false. We're returning um, true if C is a, a digit, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we're returning false if it's not. So this is an interesting situation that we'll get to make use of a lot in the future. So there are a couple different operators that we can use alongside Boolean variables, and they are AND and OR operators. Um, these Boolean operators combine multiple conditions. So when we see two ampersands together, it looks like AND AND, um, this is the AND operator. We're going to step through what these mean in a moment. Um, if we see two pipes, that is the OR operator. So AND and OR. If we need to check that two conditions are true, that's when we use the AND operator. So we need both A and B to be true. Then we're going to write out A and AND. B. We'll say A and B, but it's two ampersand signs, and that's important to remember. It's just like that equals equals for equality. So in this situation, we need both sides of that and to be true for the final result to be true. So A must be true and B must be true. Um, and you can see that in this truth table, what that means is that the only time that A and B is true is when both A and B are true. Every other combination returns false. The AND operator is used when we're combining two conditions, and it's often used in range checking. So if we want to check that a temperature is between 0 and 100 degrees, 
what we can do is we can apply that AND operator. And so looking at the flowchart on the left, what that means is uh, that AND, we have to follow the true track the whole way down. And then we'll see that the temp is greater than zero, the temp is less than 100, water is a liquid. Um, other options will fall out of this sequence. If only one of two conditions is required to be true, then we use the OR operator. Um, so here we see we have a condition A, a condition B, and we, we express A or B using those two vertical pipes. Um, and in this situation, if either A or B is true, the result is true. Um, so A being true, B being true, true. A true, B is false, no problem. A or B is still true. A false, B true, A or B is true. The only way that A or B fails this test is when both A and B are false. So for instance, if we want to wear a coat, if it's raining outside or if it's cold, then we could check, is it rainy or cold? And we'd only, if either is true, we'd want to put on our coat, a coat of some kind at any rate. We can use a compound conditional with an or statement if we have a situation where only one of two conditions needs to be true. For instance, our code snippet in the bottom right is checking to find all numbers that are not zero. And we'll see that we have another trick up our sleeve with respect to something being not something else. Um, but to find non-zero numbers, one way that we can check is to look for all numbers that are either less than zero or greater than zero. If a number is either below or above zero, it's non-zero. And so if we check our flow chart, we see that we're coming in um, and we're coming in first checking if X is less than zero. If that's true, it's a non-zero number. X is less than zero. Uh, if that's not true, there's still another path towards X being non-zero and that's if X is greater than zero. Um, and so in that case, we follow the false branch of our first decision we come in, we check if x is greater than zero. If it is, x is still a non-zero number. So there are two ways to the same end. And we remember that this is true from our truth chart because when we look at a or b, the only way um, that this is false is when both a and b are false. I alluded to the fact that there was a way to check if something wasn't true. So. In this case, we can, we can apply the not operator, and that is uh, the exclamation point. We've already seen that at, at play when we use the phrase not equal, right? Exclamation point equal. Well, that exclamation point can be put in, in front of other things to invert a Boolean variable. So if you need to invert a Boolean variable or a comparison, you can put an exclamation point in front of it. So if we have a condition A, um, we can we can look at the negative of that. For instance, if we have a Boolean variable, as we see bottom right, ready for test, um, which could be true or false, then if we put an exclamation point in front of it, that's really saying if not ready for the test, if not ready for test. Um, and if you're not ready for the test, one should study. So what that looks like is the following. If we come in to uh, a decision, ready for test, not ready for test uh, is different, right? Now that's not ready for test is true when we're following the false branch of ready for test. So that's a tricky piece to keep in mind. We'll certainly have more examples to come, but for now, thanks for watching. Wait. Are we done already? Yes, why? I thought we could stay for a while. Get it? For a while? I don't get it. Are you loopy? <laughs> Maybe I am. Next time, we'll cover loops. The while loop and the for loop. I guess you get it. 
See you next time.